In the icy town of Barrow, Alaska, people are getting ready for a month of darkness called the 30 days of night. In winter, the sun won't show up during this time. People who don't want to deal with the super long nights leave for places like Fairbanks, where it's not as dark. While everyone is preparing, a mysterious person known as the stranger arrives. He comes to the shore in a small boat from a big ship and starts walking towards Barrow. Once he reaches the town, he starts doing really bad things to mess it up. He takes and breaks all the cell phones, so no one can talk to each other or anyone outside the town. Then, he wrecks the only helicopter in town, making it impossible for anyone to escape or get help. Finally, the stranger goes after the sled dogs, killing all of them. Those dogs were crucial for transportation and survival in the tough winter. So, Barrow is left in a big mess, with no way to communicate, escape, or even get around in the freezing cold. All because of the stranger's mysterious and harmful actions. Barrow's sheriff named Eben Olson is looking into some crimes. While doing this, he discovers that his wife Stella, who had moved away from the town some time ago, missed the last plane to leave town. So, she's stuck in Barrow for the next 30 days. Even though Eben and Stella are trying to avoid each other, things take a turn when Eben faces a stranger in the diner. Stella ends up assisting Eben in dealing with the stranger, and together they take the person to the police station. While in jail, the stranger teases Eben, Stella, Eben's younger brother Jake, and their grandma. The stranger warns them about impending danger. Suddenly, vampires strike the town's communication and power sources, plunging it into darkness and cutting it off from the outside. Eben checks out the telecommunications center and discovers the operator's head on display. To find those behind the gruesome acts, Eben and Stella venture through the town in search of answers. The vampires, led by a guy named Marlow, launch an attack on the town. Marlow talks in an old, strange language, and the other vampires make scary noises. Regular bullets don't work on them except if shot in the head, and they end up killing a lot of people, including Eben's grandma. The survivors gather in the diner. Eben and Stella get attacked by vampires, but a snowplow driver named Bo Brower saves them, and they all head to the diner. People in the diner decide to go to a house that was boarded up by someone who left town earlier. The house has a secret attic where they can hide. Marlowe finds the stranger in jail and, as a favor for his help, quickly kills him. Marlowe tells the other vampires not to turn anyone into a vampire. Instead, they plan to massacre the town and then disappear. So people think vampires are just scary stories and not real. In the next week, Eben, Stella, Jake, and seven others stay in an attic. They argue about leaving, but most decide to stay. Only Wilson and his dad Isaac are lost. Eben discovers that beheading vampires kills them while helping a survivor. During a blizzard, they go to a general store. There, a young girl vampire attacks, and they can't go back to their hiding spot due to the blizzard. Eben suggests going to the station house, and to distract the vampires, he plans to run to his grandma's house, which has a special lighting system because she grew marijuana. Eben gets to the house, starts the generator, and uses special lights to burn the vampires following him. Marlo has to kill one of the vampires to end her suffering. Eben escapes, but the vampires keep chasing him. Bo, the snowplow driver, helps again by killing many vampires with his plow. He crashes into a hotel and tries to use dynamite to burn the vampires, but it doesn't work well. This distraction gives Eben time to reach the station house. There, one of their group turns into a vampire due to wounds. Still holding on to his humanity, he asks Eben to behead him, and Eben does it. After two more weeks, Stella and Eben notice someone signaling from across the street. It's Billy Kicka, Eben's deputy. Eben and Stella reach Billy's house. During the vampire attack, Billy had to sadly kill his own family, but his attempt to end his life was unsuccessful due to a jammed gun. They bring him back to the station house. At the station house, they find out that others have reached the Utilidor, a power station controlling the oil pipeline, the only place with electricity. Eben, Stella, and Billy start sneaking towards the Utilidor. Stella stops to save a girl from a vampire. Eben and Billy try to distract the vampire while Stella takes the girl to safety. Unfortunately, Billy and Eben get separated, and both eventually reach the Utilidor, but a vampire follows Billy. Eben is glad to find the other survivors alive. A vampire attacks Billy, causing serious injuries. Billy sacrifices himself by knocking the vampire into the Utilidor's pump gears, destroying it. To prevent Billy from turning into a vampire, Eben sadly has to end his life. The sun will rise soon, and the vampires plan to burn the town to hide their actions. Stella contacts Eben, hiding with a young girl under a truck as the flames get closer. Knowing he can't defeat the vampires as a human, Eben injects himself with infected blood to become a vampire. He engages in a fierce battle with Marlow and emerges victorious. With no leader, the other vampires vanish. Stella brings Eben to see the sunrise. She holds him close as he burns away in the sunlight. 